Hey, if you've got your Bible with you, could you please go to Acts chapter 16, Acts 16, verse 25. I'm Ben Archer. I'm the student ministries pastor here. And uh, yeah. While you're turning there, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to share some quick context about me and who I am. Now, I grew up in a small town called Burgettstown. We had more cows and pastures than we did sidewalks. And I'm 29 years young. I've got four chest hairs, one wife, one daughter. I love food. I love riding dirt bikes. And holla at your boy, I love to drink coffee. And uh, so I brought a picture of my wife and I today. We're going to throw up. My wife is, uh, she is amazing. She's an amazing woman, beautiful inside and out. Her name's Alyssa, and she is Mexican. She is spicy, bocas locos forever, homes. And, and we have a wonderful daughter, Mila Catalina Archer. Mila Catalina Archer. Coincidence? Uh, I think not. And, uh, and then you get to Archer, the whitest, brightest last name ever. But, uh, you know, Mila, we're we're in a super fun stage right now as we're teaching her to smile, as you can see. Um, So if you ask her to smile in the hallways, this is what you're likely to get. Um, but, But she's a sponge, she's 20 months old, and she's a mockingbird. So right now we chase her through our halls of our home and we're like, I'm gonna pinch your butt, I'm gonna pinch your butt. And, And so what is strange is sometimes when she meets strangers, she'll tell them, I'm gonna pinch your butt which makes for an awkward conversation starter. Um, but you know, that's, that's what's going on in, in our world and in our life. And one last thing before we get started, I really wanted to encourage you that if you haven't signed your kids up for Victory's summer camps, please, please do that. You know, we see amazing things happen at camp. We see signs and wonders. We see healing and, and God shows up in such a magnificent way, healing emotionally, physically, and relationally. It's amazing to see what God does. Actually, I, I brought a picture with me real quick. Uh, we're gonna throw up. So th- this is one of the times, it just, it's awesome to see our kids rally around each other, lay hands on each other and be gl- believing God for miracles. Come on, is that not amazing? In fact, something separate, another time, this is completely opposite of that picture, but God prompted our heart during one of the services to to address any student that might be dealing with suicide and suicidal thoughts. And and it was amazing what God did. We had 30 students that came up that we were able to help navigate and give them next steps. Isn't that amazing? It's amazing. That's just a few stories of, of hundreds and uh, in fact, if you're a parent in here that, and you've sent your child to camp, can I just see your hand real quick? Oh man, amazing, amazing. I really believe that if I were able to ask every single one of you that you would say that God showed up, your kid came home and said God showed up in a real way, I know that God is real and, uh, and that they've seen some amazing stuff. So I just gotta encourage you, please sign your kids up for camp. You can go to myvfc.info. And, and get them signed up. But if you got your Bible with you or a cell phone, great. Both of them are Bibles. So let's go ahead and let's open up God's Word. You can download the YouVersion Bible app. And we're going to go to Acts chapter 16, verse 25. We're going to hover right here on these scriptures and, and that we're about to read. It's going to be the foundation of our message today. And, and I'll be sharing some other ones, but this is kind of home base. And I want to encourage you, please. Please, please, please take notes today. Note takers are history makers. I really believe that that if you'll store God's word up in the well of your heart, that in due season and in due time, God will bring it out of you. And and you gotta you gotta be an echo before you can be a voice. You gotta you, leaders are repeaters. So store up God's word in your heart. We're gonna jump right in. Acts chapter sixteen, verse twenty-five. If you're with me, say yeah. yeah. Okay, that was all right. We're gonna work on that. I gotta give you some context. So I, I, I need, I gotta tell you up front, I need crowd participation. So if I'm preaching good, you can go ahead and say, amen, hallelujah, holla at your boy, preach it white boy. If I'm preaching bad, go ahead and tell me, hallelujah, come on, preach it white boy. And so uh, I, I do need that crowd participation. So Acts chapter 16, 25, at about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, 
At once, all prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up because he had fallen asleep binge watching Netflix. And so when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. And the jailer called for the lights and rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. Then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and all others in his house. And at that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he, would, he and his whole household were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and he set a meal of Chick-fil-A with waffle fries before them. Hallelujah. And he was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God. He and his whole household. I just love that last part. Come on, any, anybody believe that today, that, that the good news of Jesus Christ isn't just for you, but it's for everybody in your household? Come on, come on, anybody want to see your whole house get saved? Your whole house serving the Lord? Come on, I, I, I believe that there are some of us, maybe, maybe we have a child that isn't saved, or, or maybe we have a cousin that isn't saved. Everybody's got a cousin that isn't saved. And, or maybe there's a spouse or a loved one, and can we just have faith for that today and believe in that, that they're going to get saved in Jesus' name? Amen. I want to encourage you that if you're taking notes, please write down the title of today's talk. It's called, That's My Jam. Yeah. You can write that down and tell somebody next to you, tell them with a little bit of attitude, say, that's my jam. Now look at your second option, who was not your first, but we're not keeping score. Tell them, that's my jam. But you, you got to say it like, don't be like, well, that's my jam. Rick and Jimmy, we're going to get together, we're going to jam. We're going to listen to some Jimmy jams, it's going to be great. Now you got to say it with some hood. You got to say it with like some streets of cranberry, like, yeah. <laughs> That's my jam. Hey, we're just going to pray and, and believe that God's going to come and strengthen us this morning. Does that sound good? Let's bow our heads. Father, we just thank you so much for your word that it's a lamp to our feet, a light to our path. And Holy Spirit, we yield to you. I thank you for opening our eyes so we can see you, Jesus. Open our ears so that we can hear you so clearly. God, do what only you can in this time and in this setting. And, and Father, I thank you that we can build our life on you and we can learn to praise and worship you. In Jesus' mighty name, everybody said amen. amen and amen. So I do need some crowd participation, okay? So by a show of hands, where are my music lovers at? Where are you at? Okay, okay. I love music. Absolutely love it. Where's my Spotify people at? Okay. What about Amazon music? How about Apple music? I love music. Absolutely love it. Like music is life and I love all types of music. Let me share a few of my favorite kinds of music. I love screamo music. I know. And there's something about it when you just go hard and fast and they're like, din, 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 din. So I don't know. I don't know what it is about it. I love rap music. And uh, I grew up in the 90s, so I'm a white guy that fell in love with rap music early. Um, and so uh, anybody like Michael Jackson? Any Michael Jackson fans in the house? Okay. How about, how about Ariana Grande? Oh, just a few. Wow. Maroon 5. Drake. How about Justin Bieber? How about Jimmy Buffett? Come on. How about Tom Petty fans? Any Tom Petty fans in the house today? How about Taylor Swift fans? Anybody like Taylor Swift? Let me just say, if you don't like Taylor Swift, we just got bad blood, okay? It's all going to be bad. And I like jazz music. Anybody like jazz music? How about oldies music? Okay, okay. There's, I love all types of music, but there's one type I just can't stand. One type I can't get down with, ain't going to do it, don't want to do it. I don't want to listen to no country music. I don't want to do it. Can't do it. Listen, I don't want to hear about your truck. I don't want to hear about your dog. I don't want to hear about the reasons for the teardrops on your guitar. Ain't nobody got time for that. And... But I got to tell you my ultimate favorite type of music. My favorite, uh, uh, above screamo, above everything. Oh, I love worship music. Anybody love the worship and praise God? Come on. Above everything. Anybody like Hillsong? Come on, how about Hillsong Young and Free? How about Bethel? What about Jesus culture? 
I love worship music. And let me just say this, that if you are new to church, you are so blessed. Like if you've started coming to church in the last three to five years, you are so hooked up. Because when I grew up in church, we didn't have no Carrie Job. When I was growing up in church, we didn't have no Bethel. When I was growing up in church, we had to get our praise on to this little light of mine. Like who wrote that? It's just crazy. It's not fair. Nowadays, you ever be in church and the worship team, they're just killing it, but you kind of get before God and you got your alligator arms on you and you're like, you know, maybe you got the Hillsong sway and you, and then all of a sudden, you don't, you don't know what happens, but the worship team starts to play your song. Come on, raise a hallelujah comes on and you're just like, oh, you best get out of my way. I'm about to get my praise on. I'm about to worship God. I need some space in this house. I wanna to talk today about building your whole life on worship. I wanna to talk today about building your whole existence on praising God. Because let me just give you the FYI. The reality of this situation is, the song might not always be the one that you love. The season might not always be something to sing about. But one of the things that I love about God is we do not worship a God because of what He does. We worship a God because of who He is. Come on. There's just something about a person that, that makes the decision and says, I don't care what the track is. I don't care what's going on in my life, but you're gonna find these hands raised in the sky. You're gonna hear this voice lifted as loud as it'll go. I'm gonna get my praise on. I'm gonna worship God. I'm gonna bless the Lord. Come on, anybody love to worship God? I wanna tell you something, listen. What I love about God is God never promised you a safe journey. He only promised you a safe arrival. So in the midst of the journey, you're gonna have some highs and you're gonna have some lows. You're gonna have some peaks and you're gonna have some valleys. This faith thing is not an event, this faith thing is a journey. So in the midst of the journey, you're gonna have to learn, it, learn how to lean in and praise God. When you can't see the light at the end of the tunnel, when it feels like everybody's abandoned you, when it feels like hell on earth, yes, even when it hurts, you gotta learn how to lean in and praise God and say, I don't care what my body feels like, I don't care what my emotions are saying, I don't care what the world says, come on, haters gonna hate. I'm gonna get my praise on. I'm gonna worship God because he's worthy. I just, I love this story. Acts chapter 16, about Paul and Silas, it says that at about midnight, that at about midnight, Paul and Silas, that they are in prison. They are in jail. It's midnight. Paul and Silas, it's prison. Have you ever been to prison? Do not raise your hand right now. If you're single, you are gonna stay mad single. But they're, they're in jail at about midnight. I don't know what you do at your house at midnight, but for me, my wife and I, we have the thickest down comforter that you can find. That thing is heavy. And it's literally up to my neck. I'm about to pass out. That's midnight at my house. And, and so the Bible says that Paul and Silas, they are in jail. And they're lifting up some praise to God. By the way, they're not in jail because of murder. They didn't do anything wrong but love Jesus. Anybody thankful that we live in America where we can praise God without having any fear? Come on. They're in jail because of their faith. And Paul and Silas, they're in prison, and the Bible says that they start to praise the Lord. They start to worship God, and, and as they're lifting up their name, as they're singing, hallelujah, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, we raise a hallelujah, as they're just worshiping God. At about midnight in jail, the Bible says that other prisoners are listening to them. Can I tell you today that you never know who's listening to you? You never know who's eavesdropping on your conversation. You never know who's Facebook stalking you. Somebody's like, oh my gosh, how did you know that was me? Like, you never know who's listening to what you have to say. It's amazing what the power of sound can do. Recently, my wife and I, we had a couple, um, we had a couple properties, and so we were selling them, we were liquidating them because of what God put on our heart to do. So as we were going through this process and we were selling our homes, we lived in, in, in one of the apartment buildings, and so we had three units and we had to renovate. And as we were going through this process, we were stripping the walls and repainting and we were tearing up the carpet. And, and one night we were laying in bed and, 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 and I just remember comforter up to my head, you know, I'm about to pass out. And I looked over to Alyssa and I could hear somebody walking around inside our living room. 
it was the strangest, wildest thing. Like I could hear them talking and, and I just remember looking over at Alyssa and being like, hun, you go check it out. I'm gonna stay here, I'm gonna pray, cause I'm the holy one. And, uh, but see, what had happened was when we tore up the carpet, it changed the acoustics in the room. And so we could hear our tenants walking up and, and talking and it was the craziest thing. And I just remember like, God, it's amazing what the power of sound can do. So here's Paul and Silas. They're in jail and they're lifting up some, the sound of worship. They're lifting up the sound of heaven, the sound of glory, the sound of freedom. They've got chains on, but they're praising and worshiping God. And the Bible says that as they were praising God, that the chains fell off and the prison doors opened up. Come on, I'm telling you that the Bible says that where the spirit of the Lord is, that there is freedom and that the chains gotta fall and the doors gotta open up. Come on, somebody, let me hear you. I don't know what chains look like for you. I don't know what the prison door is that's in front of you. Maybe, maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's addiction. Maybe it's relational dynamics or marital situation. Maybe it's a financial thing or illnesses. But when the presence of God shows up, people get set free. Come on, who the sun sets free is free indeed. This is awesome. They're praising God. They're worshiping Jesus and, and an earthquake breaks out, the chains fall off and the doors open up. Paul and Silas, they walk out the jail cell. And the Bible says that all other prisoners, listen to this, all other prisoners are set free. You need to know tonight, today, that when you start praising God, when you start worshiping God, that you're not just getting freedom for you, but it's affecting your friends, it's affecting your family, it's affecting your jobs, this city, this nation, this world. Come on, and God begins to show us, show us a new level of freedom. Like, OMG, they're free. This is, this is unbelievable. This is amazing. Now I had told you that the jailer, he was over here because he, he passed out, he fell asleep binge watching Netflix, you know. And so he's passed out and when the jailer wakes up, when the jailer wakes up, he sees Paul and Silas and he sees all of the prisoners and he, he, the jailer concludes to himself, he said, I would rather take my own life and commit suicide than rather having to tell my boss, let alone my wife, what just happened. Oh, but you ain't ever gonna believe what had happened. See, what had happened was, he, he, he said, just as he pulls out the sword, the Bible says that, that he's on the brink of suicide. He's on the brink of taking his, his own life because of what just happened on his watch. He's got his sword out, it's about to go down. The Bible says that Paul looks over and he sees the jailer and watch what he does. He goes, sir, sir, no, don't do it. Think about your kids, man. Think about your wife, like we're all here. What I love about God is God never creates a win-lose scenario. God never wants to bless you to curse somebody else. God never wants to bring you up to push somebody else down. Come on, I believe that today. Anybody, anybody believe that God blesses us to be a blessing? He says, no, 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 no. I love this, watch what God does. He always creates a win-win scenario. You know, when my wife and I were going through the process and, and selling our home, right at that last stage when we listed it, we, we, we had about three or four offers and, and they were looking really good. We had somebody that put in an offer that outbid everybody and it looked so good. And so we ended up taking that and as we walked through the process, we got our home inspection and it wasn't bad, but, but the guy came back and put in an offer so low that was like lower than our lowest offer. It didn't look good for us. And everything that happened was a lose scenario. It was a win for him and a loss for us. And I just remember processing with Alyssa and saying, shoot, I will never do business with that man. So we backed out. You know what I love about God? God never blesses us to curse somebody else. He never hooks us up to put somebody else down. Paul's like, please don't do it. The jailer, the, the one who was about to commit suicide, the jailer, he's so moved by his compassion. He's never seen anything like it. And, and he comes, he literally comes rushing in, he falls before him and he's like, oh, guys, what must I do to be saved? Translation, if this is what Christianity is, sign me up. 
If your religion's about being nice to one another, loving on one another, looking out for one another, building people up instead of pushing them down, I got to be a part of that. Come on, anybody want to be a, be a part of that and, and show people what the gospel is really about? Now notice what Paul and Silas say. They say, sir, all you have to do is believe in Jesus. So um, if you want to be saved, it's really that simple. All you have to do is believe in Jesus. Our job is to point people to Jesus. Our job is to make much of Jesus. The Bible says to all those who call upon the name of the Lord that they shall be saved. The jailer, he, he can't believe this. He's like, no, nah, man, I know it ain't that easy. Paul's like, no, trust me. That's all you got to do to be one of us. To be a Christian, all you have to do is to believe in Jesus. And, and so he's so moved. Once again, he's like, hey, guys, do you think that you could come back to my crib and tell my wife and my kids how easy it is to become a Christian? And Paul's like, shoot. We fresh out of prison. You got food at the house? Like, let's go. And, you know, so the Bible says that Paul and Silas and the jailers, they come back to the house and the, the jailer gets saved. His wife gets saved. All of his kids get saved. Then they all get baptized. Come on, can we just give God a shout of praise this morning? They all give their life to Jesus. And they're sitting on his, on his couch. They're watching Netflix at about 2 a.m., now they're posted up, and at the bottom of the scripture that we had just read, the jailer, the one who was about to commit suicide, the jailer, it's now 2 a.m., his wife is saved, his kids are saved, they're all baptized, and he's got two guys fresh out of prison sitting on his couch, and the Bible says that he's washing their wounds and he's feeding them food. He's feeding them food and he's washing their wounds. It's amazing to me. Please hear this. It is amazing to me that the whole time Paul and Silas, they were like, we're not going to let our circumstance determine our faith, but we're going to let our faith determine our circumstances. Come on. You, you, I, you could come hell or high water. I, I, you're going to find these hands raised in the sky. You're going to hear this voice lifted as loud as it'll go. You could throw the kitchen sink at me. If I don't care if I got chains on. I don't care if there's prison doors in front of me, but you're going to find me worshiping God. You're going to find me praising the Lord. You can't take away my voice. You can't take my spirit. Devil, you can't touch me. I'm going to get my praise on. And sometimes you've got to worship and praise God when everybody around you is like, why are you still worshiping him? Hashtag worst day ever. Job's life. Like, I don't know who I'm encouraging this morning. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but, but I came to tell you that just because you got Jesus with you on the journey doesn't mean that you're going to have peachy keen days every single day. It doesn't mean that it's going to be all roses and all great. It just means that you've got Jesus with you in the valley, and you've got him on the mountaintops. You've got him in the good times, and you've got him in the bad times. And, and he's walking with me. He's helping me. He's leading me. He's guiding me. He's coaching me. He's mending me. Come on, can we just give God a shout of praise this morning? Worship team, could you come join me? As they're coming up, I'm going to give you four quick thoughts on worship. Four quick thoughts, and I just, I pray that you pull out your phone and you write these down, that you take notes and you store them up in the well of your heart. Number one, worship brings God and all that he is. Worship brings God and all that he is. When you and I, when we worship God, God's not up in heaven playing Fortnite. And maybe you're in the car or in the shower or you're sitting here in church or you're at your cubicle at work or school and God hits the pause button and he's like, hey guys, Rick and Jimmy, get down there again, huh? There they go, they're praising me. Let's hook these guys up. Let's give them a good 50% discount, huh? That was funnier than you all thought. I just... <laughs> but that's not God. When you praise God, the Bible says in Psalms 22, verse 3, he inhabits the praises of his people. Translation, please hear me. God lives where you praise. It could be in your shower. It could be in your car. It could be in your school. It could be in your room. It could be in your job. God shows up when you start to praise him. 
God shows up. Not an angel, God. Our God shows up. You ever invite a friend over and you guys are hanging out and you're sitting around and the whole time they're on their phone and they're texting. And you're just like, yay! And they're like, yeah, hold on. I'm talking to my wife. She's putting Stouffer's mac and cheese in the oven. She wants to know if I want two. You better believe it. Hold out your boy, it's about to go down. And you feel like they're there, but they're not really there. When you worship God, he shows up and he's not distracted. He says, what do you need? What do you need? All that I am is available to you. Do you need peace? Do you need joy? Do you need hope, mercy, kindness? You need deliverance. All that I am is available. God's here. He's not distracted. Number two, worship takes my eyes off of myself and places them on Him. You ever get tagged in a photo? Maybe there's like six people in that photo. The very first thing you do is you pinch and zoom. That photo looks good if you look good. That photo is horrible. Take it down if I look bad. Am I preaching to anybody? Just bear with me for a moment. Our whole life is about us. Do people like me? Am I cool? Am I all right? Am I accepted? When I worship God, when I physically open my mouth loud enough that I can hear it and I begin to praise Him, there's power when you speak. God has given you power and authority. When you begin to worship God and praise God, all of my troubles, all my anxieties fade into the background, then I can see Him again. If I could just get a glimpse of heaven. I remember one time when I was growing up in church, I grew up in a very Pentecostal church. We were the holy rollers. We had a flag team. It was wild. And I remember, I remember when I was young, I remember asking my dad, I said, Dad, I don't see no guns, but I see a lot of people with their hands up. I said, Dad, why do people lift their hands in church? And, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of money. And my dad said, you know, when we go home and I have you take the TV antennas, the rabbit ears, and I have you just picture them just right so we can get a clear picture. He said, all these people come in here with life, with stuff and baggage and junk and they got their hands full and, and, and he said, if they could just get a clear picture of Jesus, if they could just set their eyes on Jesus. You know, the Bible says in Hebrews 12 verse two that we do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I dare you to get a glimpse of God today. I dare you. And number three, worship, it refreshes my soul. Worship refreshes my soul. I love flying. When my wife and I, when we were getting married, we did a destination wedding. Haul at your boy. I know how to wine and dine. That's another message. But, uh, but we flew to Florida, and, and so uh, something happens. I love it. Every single time we get on an airplane, I fall asleep. I pass out. So I made sure I had my hoodie on, my sweatpants, my, my earbuds, you know, and I'm just, I'm ready to go. And when I passed out, I thought when we landed that it was going to be the coldest plane. But when we landed, it ended up being the hottest plane I've ever been on in my life. And I woke up just feeling like I was in some, like so, somebody's mouth. You know, like neck, sweaty neck, and just, and like, you ever see somebody with cotton mouth? Like, and I remember looking for the stewardess, because I was like, God, I would do anything for a glass of water. And they were all buckled in, and I remembered that when I was in Pittsburgh, I, I bought a giant jug of smart water. And you know, you ever just start to chug your water, and, and as you're going, you're like, midway through, you're like, can we do it? Oh my gosh, we're doing it. Like, I'm all in, breathe through your nose, ah. Can I tell you, worship refreshes my soul. When I feel down, 
when I feel depleted and depressed and overwhelmed and filled with anxiety and angst, and I come into his presence and I lift my voice and I lift my hands and I'm like, God, I need a time of refreshment. The Bible says in, in Acts 3, 19 through 20, then times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. Anybody want a refreshing time this morning? And our last and final thought, worship is my balance between my Luke 7, 16. Worship is my balance between my Luke 7, 16. Luke 7, 16 says this, that they all realized that they were in a place of holy mystery, that God was at work among them. They were quietly worshipful and then noisily grateful. They were quietly worshipful and then noisily grateful. This is it. This is the moment that we're about to go back into. We're about to worship God in a moment. You ever been in church and the worship team, they're just killing it? It doesn't matter how loud they are, but you just get before Jesus, you just get quiet before Him. In fact, could you stand to your feet? Just get quiet before Him. Maybe close your eyes. Just begin to think on Jesus. Just kind of think on God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God. God, I thank you that you love somebody like me. Just get quiet before him. Can't believe how good he is. Listen, don't try to get from people what only God can give. Learn to receive from your heavenly father. And he says, you are chosen. You are set apart. You're pursued. You're valuable. You're esteemed. You're loved. You're not a mistake. I don't make mistakes. He is so generous. He is so good. Just receive it. And all of a sudden you go from that quiet place and something comes on you so heavy and you're like, whoa, I gotta get my praise on. I gotta get my worship on. Oh, I gotta start to bless you, Lord. I gotta start to praise you, Lord. I know everything good is from you and anything else is from the enemy. God, I know that you're a good God, good God. I praise you, I worship you. Come on, all around this room, let's begin to praise God. Let's begin to worship God. And the worship team's gonna start to lead us as we begin to raise our hallelujah, as we begin to praise God and worship Him. Oh, we just thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Go ahead, Nate. Just worship, just worship.
so many of us are coming before God and we're telling God how big our problem is. You gotta stop. You gotta start to tell your problem how big your God is. Come on. You gotta start to raise a hallelujah. Come hell or high water, you gotta get your praise on. Maybe you came in here today and you haven't even heard of this Jesus guy. Maybe you've been believing for a long time. It's awesome. But in one moment, in one moment, I'm going to ask that if you haven't made Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, that you make that decision today. In a moment, everybody's going to bow their heads and Nobody's going to look around. This is between you and God. This is between you and I. Jesus said this. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man comes to the Father except through me. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 through 10, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe it in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you'll be saved. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask that everybody bows their head and close their eyes. Go ahead, you can do that now. I'm gonna ask that you you raise your hand, if that is you, and you wanna make Jesus Christ Lord and Savior of your life, that you slip up your hand. Thank you, Jesus, I see that. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. What we're about to do is we're we're about to pray a prayer together, everybody together. And listen, I gotta tell you that this prayer isn't what gets you saved. It's the vessel and how you get saved. But the Bible said in Romans 9 through 10 that when you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, Lord means master, which means God begins to govern my life, that I submit my life to the word and God's authority. And that if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you're saved. The prayer is how we do this. So right now, everybody's gonna repeat after me and I want you to have a confident expectation 
that Jesus Christ is coming into your heart and that you are saved, you are heaven bound. Can we pray together? Father, I come to you in Jesus' name. And I believe with all my heart that Jesus, you're the son of God. And you died on the cross for my sins. And Jesus, I receive you now to be my Lord. I'm a child of God and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, can we just give God a shout of praise one more time?